Good morning, Leah. It is nice to see you this morning and to chat. Yes, good morning, Allison. I feel like we didn't get a chance to talk much this week. No, we didn't. In fact, I feel like there were days where I was like, hmm, I wonder if, Le if Leah's here this week. You know, I just, we didn't. Yeah, didn't yeah. Well, I'll warn you, I won't be there Monday or Tuesday. Okay. But, um. The vacation? So, um, yeah, I took a couple of vacation days. I just, I, I needed a long weekend, so. Nice. Yeah, no, that's actually, I feel like that that comes up this time of year because you're, you've had the winter and things are kind of starting to transition and you need like sort of transition yourself. And I say that because I had planned to take that amount of vacation days last year around this time. They were scheduled <laughs> for the week that we ended up being closed the first week I had. And <laughs> so anyway, anyway, so yes, I agree around this time of year, you need that little, little gap. Yeah. My brain is just doing that constantly. It's thinking this time last year, this time last year, this time last year, and it's going to get worse as every day goes on. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you're, you're just kind of like, where did the last year go? Like, how is it already a year since this, this all began? Yeah. yeah. No, I've been looking in my pictures on my phone. So mm -hmm. like, you know, what was I taking pictures of, which if I have to freely admit half of them are screenshots of things, usually <laughs> just things right. like I don't know. Um, so I guess I was looking at shoes that day. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> on the same day last year to this year, I sent pictures to my parents of my crocuses blooming. So those are pretty regular and routine. Um, but just trying to look and see where was my mindset at this point versus this point. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to keeping going with that. And on this day last year, I was actually attending an event in Columbus, James McBride, the author of De Deacon King Kong and Good Lord Bird um, came to Columbus and I was there seeing him speak in a very crowded auditorium situation. Our chairs were like side by side, our shoulders were like pressed against each other. And we were all like right, right here. And that's what I was doing a year ago today. I don't know what I was doing a year ago today. I'm glad you remember. You're welcome. I have a weird, weirdly specific type of memory. <laughs> it's not usually very helpful, but it is very specific in certain instances. Yeah. Morning, Andrea. Good morning, Chelsea. Um, for I don't know when the library will open up to people who can't wear masks. Um, when we do open up, you will be required to wear a mask covering your nose, mouth, and chin. Um, we, you can wear um, face shields. Um, that is acceptable, but you do have to wear a mask. Um, and so I don't know when it will be open for people who can't wear masks, so. Children under 10 though, correct? Do not have to? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going with like the state mandate. So yeah. and the state mandate says children, ten and anyone ten and over. So that's what we're doing. Okay. And yes, it does look like my internet is behaving today, Andrea. Fingers oh, I'm not on wood. That's what you're hearing is me pounding on my table. Please continue. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yes. Yeah, sorry everybody for last week when the screen kept expanding and it was just me going, Well, I guess I'll just keep talking about what I was talking about. So here we go. I don't think Leah or I, either of us went back. I don't ever go back and watch the show, but I definitely did not go back and see how that turned out. <laughs> I sometimes do, like, cause my mom, she doesn't have Facebook, so she doesn't watch it on Facebook, but once it gets posted on YouTube, she will she will watch it. And sometimes I have been there to see it with her. Um, so. You hear your own voice talking in the background and you're like, oh. I do, it's very awkward. And I'm like, my laugh is weird. Cause, and I'll do this thing where I throw my head back and like, I, I don't. Well, you know what, we are who we are. We've become much more comfortable with it in the age of Zoom, or at least I have. This is it, guys. <laughs> um, um, I'm sorry about the mask issue and, um, and the, the, the issue with the mask, it is one of those we're also trying to keep staff safe and so, and the public safe because, you know, if staff get sick, we have to shut down the building. So it's more than just, um, yeah, it's one of those tricky issues and I'm sorry that it's not perfect, but we are requiring masks. So, yeah. and yes, Andrea, we're going to hope you didn't jinx me. <laughs> Well, we know to blame if it goes wrong again. So um, speaking of last week, 
I yeah. actually wanted to let you know that I read Coyote Dog Girl. I picked it because, good morning, Liz. I picked it in part because it was the shortest of the things. I knew that if I were going to read something between now and our next show, um, this would be the one. So uh, thank you for picking it, Leah slash Mary. I enjoyed <laughs> it. It was funny and fun. And it turns out I've actually read something by Lisa Hannah Walt before. I didn't piece it together on the show because it was like, you know, all happening at once. But um, which also had a horse on the cover, or I think it had a horse on the cover, and it was called I Want You. But this is Coyote Dog Girl. Um, she is a coyote dog girl, and it's like a little Western. Um, and I would recommend it for fans of Bojack Horseman for obvious reasons. There's anthropomorphic types of animals, um, you know, drawn in this type of style. And also for fans of Broad City, it reminded me of that for some reason. It was humorous and warm and like strangely touching at, at times. Um, and then I felt good about my recommendation because on the back, did not read this, I promise. On the back, there's a quote from Abby J Jacobson from Broad City. So I was like, okay, I guess I was a little bit on track. So anyway, thank you for picking this out. This was in my book bundle that Leah made for me last week. And um, she gave yes, me Mary, some credit for it. So. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mary. So she is on here. Um, I'm sure you would like it. Yeah. And so I plan on reading more from my bundle. But like I said, I knew I could tackle this in the week, the week that we had. So thank you. I will confess, I didn't start any of the books that you, you gave me, but I did spend a little bit more time with, uh, you know, reading the flaps. And I'm really looking forward to that um, Clockmaker's Daughter. Oh, good. I think good. that was the name of it. I think um, so. And the other one. I can't remember the name of it, but it had the keys on the cover. You're right, the skeleton keys. Those were the two I felt the best about. Um, yes. Those were, I was like, yeah. And then the other ones being, you know, more mysteries and. They look good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not looking forward to those, but those are well, like. No, no, I know. Like, like okay. those were, I was like, these are my centerpieces. Now I have to fill it in. <laughs> um, so, so I'm so glad. And so if you guys missed our show last week, just a reminder, the library is beginning a subscription bundle program where you can fill out a form on our website, explain what you're interested in receiving from us, and we will package once a month for you a handful of books for you to choose from. According to your tastes, there will be some, there might be some things you've seen before, there might be some things you haven't, but we're trying to just give you a, an array of book options once a month as a subscription service. So we're pretty excited about it, clearly. When I heard about it, I was like, I want to sign up. I want one, even though I work at the library and I see them. I mean, I'm not going to make them do a bundle for me, but just the idea of it sounds awesome. <laughs> and it's also nice. It's, it's fun to kind of see what people around you think you're going to like, you know, too. Yeah. So it, like Andrea and Liz are jealous that they don't have the program where they live. And Liz says she read the Addie LaRue book and oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fabulous. I, I swear I have, I have been talking about this book for a month and telling everyone who is like asking for book recommendations, this is the best book I have I read. Mean, I feel out of the loop and I need to read it. I'm on hold for it, but you know, so I yeah. need to read it so that I can be in the loop now. I feel it left is, out. It is phenomenal. And my sister was like, thank you so much for that book recommendation. It was so good. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not at all kidding when I say, best book I have read in years. Like well, it just I, it, it, it feels like it appeals to a lot of different people too. Like I've heard a lot of different people say that they really liked it. So, you know, different types of readers and stuff. So that sounds encouraging. Yes. All caps. It is so good. Yes. Well, we've got the Liz seal of approval and it's not easily earned, let me tell you. So <laughs> that's great. Um, speaking of like book, cause I feel like you actually talked about that book in December. I think like you've been talking about it for longer, but you hadn't read it yet. I think you were just like, I'm excited to read this. I have this yeah. book. I've heard about this book. Like I, I read the, 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 the review of the book and the description of the book. And I'm like, that is totally something I'm going to love. Just mm -hmm. the whole, you know, the idea of the time travel and the, mm -hmm. the, you know, people not remembering her mm -hmm. and the, everything you can do with that. Like that is just yeah. so you know, intriguing, like that mm -hmm. aspect of it. You can do a lot with that, mm -hmm. um, and like how she works that into the story and like what the character is able to do because people don't remember her. Um, but, uh, you know, just, so I was really excited about the story mm -hmm. before I even got the book, but then the writing is just phenomenal. Yeah. And like, 
like there are certain lines that just strike you and it's yeah. just, oh, wow like it, it it's one of those books i'm a librarian i often do not buy books because mm -hmm. i just go to the library and take them home but this is one of those books that even though i've read it i'm gonna go out and buy it so when i read it again i can like underline passages yeah. Yeah. this is gonna oh. be weird for me well, one day when I make it through, when I make it down the holds list, I'll let you know. Everyone else will have already read it. I'll be very late to the game. No one will even remember it anymore. And I'll say, oh my gosh, remember this book? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, um, I want to talk to you about it. Maybe, right. Hopefully I get it sooner than that. <laughs> um, and yes, Liz, you do sense some snark when I said it's hard to earn your approval. But you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, Carol wants to know if you've read anything else by V.E. Schwab, the author. Of I have not. Um, I, she was not an author that I was familiar with at all. And I, someone had donated a couple of her books to the library. And actually, I think it might have been Tara. Yeah, they're, at, they're on the shelves at Northwest. Actually, I've seen, I see them when I go by. They're like big, fat, one's bright red, I think. They're these really noticeable covers. Like, I look at them every time I'm out there. <laughs> That's the author that I just loved. So I haven't read anything else by her. It looks like they're more like teen series or other stuff. Most of it, and maybe not all of it. This is um, in adult, but what? This is in adult. The books I'm thinking of are in the adult section, but oh, they are okay. Yeah, I I think so. I don't, I don't know. I I yeah. like I said, I haven't read anything else by her. Um, yeah. It was just one of those, um, and now I'm a little bit afraid to because. What if they're not as good? I don't know. Or what if it turns out they're almost identical and it turns out she only does one thing well? That's I have that issue with things too. Like you read one book and you're like, this is so good. And then you read their other books and you see they're just iterations on the same idea that the person really only has like the one idea. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So if you read anything else by her, let me know if she's good. Yeah, Carol, if you've read it, tell us. There's so much more there. It's so good, different from anything I've read recently. And she read it in like one sitting. I I actually listen to the audiobook, um, and that's why I'm like, I need the book book so I can go through and underline passages. But like, even the narrator was just so good. And um, yeah, and Andrea points out she's the woman who narrated Educated, and Educated is a really well narrated book. But that narrator also narrated a romance, and she did a terrible job. She is not a good person to narrate a romance. I really like her; she's great. But the romance should have been like a bouncy. I mean, it, it was, it was, a, it was a romance. That's, it was, there was nothing about it that was serious and it, her narrative style is just very direct and calm and straightforward and boring in the sense of a romance. It's great in other things, but in this, I was, it, it took me forever. I ended up putting on like 1.5 speed and I was like, I just got to get through this. I know they're going to get together. I don't know why I felt so committed, but I was just like, this is like move on talk about something else we want to hear other books don't not <laughs> this one book for an hour that i've already read yeah so one of the books that is on my <laughs> my to read list is yes. every last fear by alex finley um okay. it's one of those uh tightly plotted thrillers like I, I i like i like a good thriller sometimes and this one just looks really cool um uh kid's girlfriend is murdered and like the family is like did he do it it's like years later there's another tragedy um and they're like who really murdered her we don't know so yes that's one that i'm looking okay. for every last fear by alex finley mine and i'm sorry i don't have the description of this but we actually talked about it in uh, at the beginning of the year when we were going through like books that are going to be published in the first part of this year. One of the books that I had on my list was Outlawed by Anna North. It came out, I think, in January, or early February. And it's sort of like a female centric Western, which I know is like also how we described this. But um, and I don't I don't have the description in front of me, but I've had it on hold ever since I talked about it on that show. Um, and it came out and and a little plug here. It's also on hold for me in the Fairfield County District Library main library pickup blockers. Um, which we have not talked about on the show, but there are 24 hour pickup lockers at our main library location now. And so I moved to this hole to be picked up there because I just wanted to use them, but I keep forgetting about it because all my books get delivered to Northwest. So um, that book has been sitting in the lockers for a really long time, unfortunately. I gotta go get that today. Maybe on my way in, I'll go get that. <laughs> you only for like five days, Alice. <laughs> so. Well, 
it's already checked out to me. So hopefully they know who I am and they will <laughs> leave it till today. <laughs> well, the locker itself will only hold it for five days. Like after that, it like won't open for you. Oh no. Okay. Well then I'll have to go. I'll, I'll have to have someone help me. I don't know. I'll have to call in. Same yeah, as everybody else. Even if you haven't gotten around to, to taking it out. If, it if, won't open. That's good to yeah, know. I don't know when it got put in there. Oh, I'm a terrible library customer. I really am though, actually a terrible library customer. I've always had fines. <laughs> Me too. I'm I'm the worst library customer. Yeah. I took it back yesterday and I'm like, these are due, but um we'll hit the point where like I get charged for them within the four days that they're quarantined before they get checked in. What do I do to not get charged for them? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I'm the same. I've always won when we went fine free, it was just a lovely relief because and I've always even like I've always been at the cap where you can be at of fines and still be able to check out at every library I've belonged to. So, you know, the cap is different, different places. And I've always been like, can I, I'll pay down to that exact limit. And I just, I can't return stuff on time. You guys know me, you know, I have this pile, but anyway, <laughs> outlawed by Anna North. Um, and I've seen it, seen it around. It's a, like I said, a female centric Western and I've been very excited about it. It has a really cool, bold cover. And um, so if I can, retrieve that from the lockers i'll show it to you next week but otherwise i may have to go back on hold again oh you're oh, well. yeah um I've, I've missed several holds for me and i just have to walk upstairs and take it off the shelf i that's just me um yeah, i know um so another book that i'm looking forward to is the actor age i um Actor Age, Evie Brown, um, Eve Brown by yes. Edward. It's the third book in her um, Brown Sister series. And um, so I'm looking forward to that one. It yeah. is, Evie is just kind of like a flighty person and scattered mm -hmm. and gets in trouble with her family, I think after losing another job. So mm -hmm. she, she ends up, Interviewing for a job that she does not get, um, they, the cook at uh, a bed and breakfast, but like, then she hits the guy with her car. So like, he's stuck with her because like he needs help now while he's recovering. And like, he's um, autistic and like working with him, it helps her like recognize her own neurodiversity. So it's just like, yeah. I all love, cause you know, that's what happens. And that's what life. happens in the books that you like to read, right? Either something grisly yeah. or someone falls in love. Um, my and next Liz, book, I, sorry, go ahead. I think Liz says she already has that one on hold. <laughs> oh, well, perfect. See, okay, I, I, you're on the same wavelength. Um, I'll talk about one more that I brought. Well, okay, I'm gonna talk about this one because even though this is not what Liz is looking for, I suppose I can share it anyway. Um, this is a book called Pizza, <laughs> um, a book by Pizza Pilgrims, which is um, brothers James and Tom Elliott who have pizza joints in the UK, I guess, and then also have researched pizza. And I liked it because it looked like the cover, like a flattened pizza box. Um, and it, Basically, there's recipes, there's lots of close-up pictures of pizza, there's explanations for how to make like New York City style pizza at home, there's recipes for dough, all those things. But my favorite part that makes me like it so much is there's a section on the best fictional pizzerias and the top one is Little Nero's from Home Alone, which just delights me. Um, and it says Home Alone is as much a film about pizza as it is about Kevin. Pizza is pretty much the reason he left his home in the first place. 10 large pizzas ordered for four adults and 11 kids will probably cause you to sleep in. Um, and so they talk about the Little Nero's pizza truck coming, which I definitely appreciate. And then they also have pizza pop culture moments because that is the top one there too, because it's keep the change of filthy animal. Obviously <laughs> top pop culture moments involving pizza. And I'd never, I'd never reviewed, I'd never seen a list of the top pizza related pop culture moments before, but there's that. There's in Breaking Bad when Walter throws a pizza on the roof of his home and it says that at the real life Breaking Bad house, they had to build a fence around the property to keep people because from people people doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I heard um, about there's also The Office where they fight over which is better, pizza by Alfredo 
or Alfredo's Pizza Cafe. One tastes like a hot circle of garbage. You don't want to get the right or get the wrong one. And then finally, what really speaks to me, and I actually think I might have mentioned this on the show before, is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sewer pizza delivery. Because right. yes, as soon as you started talking about pizza, I was thinking, I started thinking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's cartoon pizza, but it's like I can smell it and taste it. The way and, the the, and that just that really imprinted on me when I was a kid. And so they also mention um, the pizza. Oh, I'm forgetting now, and I closed the page. The pizza thing in Toy Story, the place where they go Pizza Planet, maybe yeah. it's kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese, things yeah. like that. And um, so anyway, it has really great, like I said, close up, delicious pictures of pizza and things like that. But also, um, I just was really drawn to the pop culture pizza moments. And I love the cover of that book. Hold it up again. Yeah. It looks like a pizza box. Yep, it it's a flattened like a box. That flattened pizza box. Read in mm -hmm. or take out. It says. <laughs> yes. I was I was very good at putting pizza boxes together when I worked in a pizza shop. <laughs> Man, I've never done that before, but I imagine that you probably can quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Although I will say, after I worked in the pizza shop, it was like, and I worked there for a little over a year. Um, I couldn't eat pepperoni for like two years after that. It was just like a tragedy. The smell of pepperoni was just like, oh, I can't. But <laughs> I loved the pizza. I just yeah. pepperoni just. No, I can understand that. And you know what? I guess that means I should never, I should never attempt to work in a pizza place because I, if I get pizza and there's not pepperoni on it, I don't understand the point of ordering the pizza to begin with. And I just. Good. Uh, well, even alongside pepperoni, I just, and I love pizza so much. I think my favorite things, donuts, pizza, and popcorn. I feel like if I had those, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Any, did you I have anything it. else on your list today? <clears throat> um, let me see. Ruth I also said that she has outlawed on hold, so. <laughs> um. What are the 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 books that kind of I'm kind of interested in? It's a nonfiction. It's called Raceless. Um, it's by Georgia Lawton. Mm -hmm. um, she grew up in this small English town. You know, her parents are white. Everyone around her's white. Um, it's and and it's like she calls it an like insistently colorblind household mm -hmm. they don't acknowledge that she is not white mm -hmm. they refuse to acknowledge it um her mother like won't address it at all mm -hmm. um and eventually like after her father dies she does dna testing and of course he's not her father um <laughs> and you know she discovers finally from her mother that she's the result of a one night stand and um you know she tries to discover like what it means to be a black woman um, mm -hmm. because that's not how she was raised. She was never mm -hmm. around anyone of color herself. Mm -hmm. um, so she travels to different parts of the world, um, exploring identity and trying to, to navigate her own life and come to terms with who she mm -hmm. is. Like she and her mother, their relationship kind of falls apart and mm -hmm. they try to rebuild it. And so it just looks like an interesting read yeah. And just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the whole idea that like the family just won't acknowledge. Right. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, that does sound interesting. And um, who did you say the author was? I'm sorry. Her name is Georgina Lawton. Okay. Cool. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this could not well, it could be more. I have two more, I have two more things. One of them is kind of involved, so I'll do the other one first. Um, if we want to and on the kind of involved one, I guess. But um, this one is called If I Disappear. It is a novel by Eliza Jane. I've never known how to pronounce this. The B R A Z I E R. Versus here? No. See, that's, <laughs> that's what I wanted to say, and it felt like I should, I, it felt like that wasn't it. It feels but, like there's something razier. Yeah, someone, someone correct me, please. Um, <laughs> so, and, anyway, it is about a girl who, a woman, who loves true crime podcasts, like many mm -hmm. women do. Do you know this book? Yeah, I remember reading the, the description. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really good. Yes, they give her a sense of control in a world where women like her disappear daily. 
Um, she feels like she's preparing for something when she listens to them. So when Rachel, her favorite podcast host, goes missing, she knows it's time to act. She begins to search for the podcast host. Um, she tries to like dig out hidden clues within the podca podcast. Um, and she follows the clues to this isolated ranch outside Rachel's small hometown. And she's very proud of her investigation and everything. But the more she digs into it, surprise, the more things seem to be not quite right. And she might be in danger. She might not be, Rachel may not have been the first person to vanish from this ranch, et cetera. So I thought the concept sounded really fun if I disappear. Yeah. And, uh, so I haven't read it yet, but I thought it sounded cool. That one does look really good. And I think one of the books that I think I'm already on hold for comes out very soon. The I, I talked about it in December, so I probably shouldn't talk about it again, but uh, Era in the Sun. It uh, came by, out this week. It came out this week. I put myself on hold for it too because I forgot about it. Ishi, Ishi, Ishi. Kaz, Kazuo Ishi. Guru, Ishiguro. Um, but yes, yeah, so like there's the um why did my mind just go blank? It's about an AI. Thank you. Artificial yeah. intelligence <laughs> girls, like she's like waiting for someone to pick her from the store and like explores like what it means to, to love someone. So it just mm -hmm. kind of sounds like it's going to be and that author is the author of can I, I'm blanking. Um, oh, if you want to go surprise, right? Or, or yeah, I think the, I think. Gosh, um, I want I want to look it up, but I don't want to like risk messing. I know. Up. So like, if I look um, it up, we'll we'll lose it. Uh, but yeah, he's a he's he's right. a very, very author. Mary, maybe so. Mary can look it up for us because I'll admit I was only like half invested in the story that you explained to me but then when i found when i realized who the author was then i became more invested in reading the book so i don't know if that's snobbish you're a little bit of a reading snob aren't you i may there's that's a very so warmer, so i guess i could read it <laughs> it's a very yes it's a very high possibility that i might be slightly snobbish but but i am very lowbrow in many other ways so don't worry about it. um I have I have this picture book that I wanted to show. Do you mind? And that's why it's like a little bit more involved because I have to like it's like a picture book that I have to like show. But um, no. I just I haven't shown a picture book in a while. This one is called "I Am the Longest Dog" by Avery Monson, and you can see it is an awfully long dog. And so it introduces. My name is Lucy. I am the longest dog. This is where I start. And so every page is just kind of. Uh, I keep going too. I'm telling you, I'm a very long dog. So the pages that follow are her. Uh, some people say I am too long, but I don't listen to that nonsense. I'm a long doggy, and that is just fine by me. So the pages go through showing all the things that she's longer than, like a limo. She's longer than a blue whale. She's longer than a limo designed to transfer a blue whale somewhere. Um, she's too long for dog houses. She's too long to go for rides in the car. And every page is like her, you know, trying mm -hmm. to do the thing. Um, and she's not great at sitting on laps. And this guy is saying, yeah, this is dog might be too long. <laughs> and so um, he says, this dog might be too long. And she says, no way, Buster. I am long, but I'm not too long. This is the only body I've got. And I think it's awesome. And she spells out awesome using her body. <laughs> Um, so you follow her along through like a desert and all these places across the world. And she says, um, maybe it goes on forever and forever and even more after that. And then she says, gotcha again. This is where I stop. So there's Lucy. You've gone from her tail to her face. And then she says, oh, another dog. Nice to meet you. And she flips the dog's tail. And you may wonder where, you may guess where it's going. The dog doesn't respond. And that's because... Whoops, it was just me, ha ha. And the whole page is open and you get to see her dog bod, as she calls it, looping all around the world. And um, I'm sorry to spoil the ending, but I just thought that book was really, really, really cute. I am the longest dog. I like that she calls herself, that she has a dog bod and that she, uh, you know, there's it's nothing wrong with her. Bod. <laughs> right? There's nothing wrong with her having, she's not too long. She just is who she is. And I just thought that was really super cute. And occasionally we get uh, a picture book like that that I feel like is just as entertaining for adults as it is for children. <laughs> you know what? I, 
I think I enjoy picture books now more as yeah. an adult than I did as a kid. It's, it's, yeah, I, I really, well, yes. of course at that age, I also hated reading, although my mother well, read them, so I wasn't reading, but. Well, and you've mentioned before that you did struggle in the beginning with reading because it was challenging, and when it's challenging, you feel, you know, you don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> did you have um, anything else? Um, well, as far as silly uh, romances go, because, you know, I am a fan of those, so I will we recommend count on you. We count on you for such things. Um, there's one called Float Plan. Um, it's uh, by Trish Dollar, D-O-L-L-E-R. Um, okay. And her uh, fiancé dies, and she decides to sail across, take a voyage, sailing voyage that they had planned together. And, um, oh, this isn't the one I was thinking of. Okay, but but this is still good. Um, so, and she's, it's just a heartfelt story of navigating through grief and finding oneself in a new direction. Um, you know, your life going in a new direction. That one was not the one I was thinking of, but I am it looking forward to it. It, it. it is not. It, it does have a very yeah. colorful cover, though. The cover looks like it's going to be. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. So um, while you transition, if you think of the one that you were going to, that reminded me. I did have this book, this book called uh, Confessions of a Curious Bookseller by Elizabeth mm -hmm. Green that I brought. It's very fat. That I brought um, because as far as I can tell, the plot is just literally you've got mail. But I'm guessing there has to be something different because but there's a used bookstore in the heart of the city and then another bookseller in her block is a man and then yeah. there's a war and then there's something about online dating and about an online pen pal so i don't but i'm assuming he can't be the online pen pal because that really is just you've got mail but it's That's exactly you've got mail yeah so i'm guessing there must be something else to it but it's told through like letters and emails which we've talked about before being like a compelling way to tell a story so anyway while you while you were looking for your next one, Confessions of a Curious Bookseller, if someone wants to read it and tell me if it is uh, for fans of You've Got Mail or if it is just You've Got Mail. It's probably You've Got Mail without the dial-up tone. <laughs> right, without you, You've Got Mail. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's You've Got Mail without that noise. Right, so. it's a, uh, you've got a red notification on your phone that you have an email, that's. A red right. notification symbol on your phone. That's that's our version of you've got mail now. Yeah, I don't know what book I thought I had written down. I think I just copied the information for the wrong book. I saw the bright cover and thought that's the one I was looking for. I'm well, sorry. I'll yeah. post it in the comments later. So yeah, or next week. <laughs> or next week. I'm because you know me. I'm all about the, the the fluffy romances, and that one just doesn't sound fluffy. So no, much. it didn't sound like. Yeah, it didn't sound fluffy enough. It sounded a little too. Uh, Finding oneself, which is great, yeah. but you know, yeah. not necessarily what we're always here for. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so. Well, it was good to see you this week. It it's the first really good to see you too. Yeah, I hadn't even really talked much, so it was nice to catch up on here. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to do it again next week. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, always feel free to leave your book recommendations or what you've been yeah. reading in the comments. So. I love it when we cross over and we've all read the same thing. That's really fun. So that means I got to get on the Batty LaRue train. What are you waiting for? I'm going to go do it right now. Okay. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye-bye. Right.